Hey guys, it's Jake here with eTrailer. Today we have a 2023 Ford Edge and we're gonna be taking a look at the Kurt four pole trailer wiring harness. Adding a four pole trailer wiring harness to the back of your edge is gonna allow you to safely transfer the four pole signals to your trailer. And that is going to be, the four pole itself is going to be a ground wire, your tail lights or your running lights, and then your stop and turn. So your left turn, right turn, and then combined signal uh, to make your stop signal. This kit is going to have a control module, uh, which is designed to protect the vehicle lights as well as the trailer lights if there are ever any problems on either one of them. So if you're having some ground issues or a short on your trailer, it's not gonna take out the lights on your vehicle. And when it comes to routing and mounting up your four pole, uh, there's two different ways you can do it. You can either do it like we have it here, where you just take the loop for the dust cap and loop it onto the safety chain loop. That way, when you're ready to hook up to your trailer, you simply pull off your dust cap, pull this through, connect it to your trailer, and then hook up your safety chain loops. Another way you can do it is if you get a four pole bracket off of our website, you can screw it right into the bottom of your plastic here, and then your four pole will be mounted up right beneath your bumper. Now, as far as the installation goes, this is going to be a custom fit installation for the 23 Ford Edge. Um, you're going to have to plug the harnesses into the backs of your taillights. The wire will run down and underneath to connect to the passenger side, but most of our other connections are going to be over here on our driver's side. You'll have to fish wire a wire up behind this portion of the rear fascia. Um, it's, not that, it's not a huge deal. I'd say probably the hardest part about this install is getting that power wire from the back to the front in order to get power for that converter box. But hopefully with my help, you're gonna be able to get yours installed with no problem. So let's take a look at that. To begin our installation, you wanna get a flathead screwdriver or a trim panel tool. Trim panel tools just help to not scratch the plastic, but we're gonna pop that little, this little cover out, set it to the side. There's gonna be a T25 Torx bit screw on the inside here, holding our tail light in place. Pull that out. And then to remove our tail light, we're going to need to pull the tail light straight back. So if you stick one of your fingers in this hole we just removed that cover from, usually you can get enough force to pull it backwards. There we go. We've got that popped out. If any of these plastic inserts come out with the light, I want to try to pop those off and stick them back in the vehicle. Then we'll need to unplug our tail light. We'll just push the tab on our light right here and pull straight up. Now you'll want to repeat that same process on the passenger side. Now we're going to take that same trim panel tool or screwdriver. We're going to tape off the seam because we need to pop this panel out a little bit to give ourselves a little bit of room to pull our wire up into, the, um, into this housing because we're going to store our converter box underneath our bumper fascia. So we'll take this, fat, this trim panel tool, push down on these tabs, pull out, and we're just trying to give ourselves a little bit more space in behind this bumper fascia. So we'll pull it out just like that, and then we're gonna try to fish wire our wire from our, our, that goes to our passenger side up into this pocket. Now, you'll wanna fish wire this wire up in here the best route that I found is if you pull this corner out a little bit, you have plenty of room back there to be able to run a fish wire. We just used a, um, an airline tube we had laying around the shop. You can use a piece of wire or string if you have one or a coat hanger and shove it down in there and then um, it'll come out the bottom. You wanna tape off the part of the harness with the yellow wire in it, pull it up into this cavity and then we're gonna take this harness and plug it into our factory harness. Now this end has become our new end that we're gonna plug into the back of the tail light. Now what we'll wanna do before we go underneath our vehicle, uh, we're gonna run, eventually run our passenger side wire over here. I'm gonna open this side up just like we did over there to get it ready and then we'll push our fish wire down there and then it'll be there waiting for us whenever we get to that point. Now starting over on our driver's side, we did a couple of things here. You'll want to first mount up your converter box. I just used the self-tapping screw that came in our kit uh, to mount it up to the sheet metal. 
Then you'll want to take another self-tapping screw. Uh, we had a couple lying around the shop here, so we grounded our ground wire there. You can just use a zip tie and tie the converter box up and out of the way so that it um, stays safe and out of harm if you don't have another self-tapping screw. But then we took our four pole wire and our green wire, ran it across the hitch. You want to zip tie it along the way. We put a loop in our the excess of our four pole and our four pole right here. And then we continued with the green wire across the hitch, zip tying it along the way. And then we ended it right here to where we're now ready to start pulling it up into our taillight housing. Now we've pulled our green wire up into our taillight housing. You want to do the same thing, just make that connection, make sure it clicks, and then we can take our panel and put it back. Now with our connections made behind the taillights, we can go ahead and put our taillights back into place. The next step in our process is we need to connect our long black power wire to the short black one that's coming out of our converter box. I want to put a twist in it. And I like to use heat shrink butt connectors on these connections because they are outside the vehicle. You can pick some up on our website. It would help to have a few for this installation. We'll crimp that down. And now I'm gonna go ahead and run this up to the battery, which is on the driver's side of the vehicle. And we'll come back and show you the route that I took to get it up there. Now we started with our black wire here, ran it through this exhaust hanger bracket, ran it over top of this strut here, and then went over the, um, the strut that's holding our rear axle in place, and came over the fuel tank, came down in between this gap right here, ran it around, tied it off to some wiring, and then I ran it in this belly pan all the way up to here where we turned and went up into the engine bay. Now with our power wire up in our engine bay, we took our fuse connector. You wanna make sure that your fuse is not in it. We use another heat shrink buck connector, connected it up to our power line going back to the back of the car. Then we put our ring terminal on the other end now we just need to connect it up to our battery. Take this off. Ours happens to be a 10 millimeter. Slide that on. And then thread our nut back on. Now with that connected, we can put our fuse in. The reason you don't want to put your fuse in before is because if you just barely tap that uh, battery terminal, the fuse will think something's wrong and it'll pop and um, chances are you probably don't have another 15 amp fuse at home. And now with all that put together, we can test out our system. Now we'll run through our basic functions to make sure our wiring's working correctly. We'll start with our left turn. Our right turn, our brake lights, and our running lights. Now that we know our wiring's working properly, that's going to do it for the installation. Hopefully this video helped you decide whether or not the Kurt 4-pole trailer wiring harness is right for you and your 2023 Ford Edge.